Well, hello, everybody. <laughs> uh, uh, welcome to another video. Um, as you can see, I'm just ready for bed. <laughs> ready for bed with who? I don't know. I'm just hitting my little, oops, foo-foo's off. Oops. <clears throat> oh dear. Well, it's been quite an evening. Quite an evening. Oops, I've got no knickers on. <laughs> um, how am I going to organise this? Uh, let's see. <laughs> well, what can I tell you? I suppose I was meant to be telling you the um, answering some more questions, wasn't I? Um, um, How's everybody doing? Mm -hmm. Good? Good. <sighs> um, sorry, this is a little bit out of frame. Here we go. Um, what was I going to talk about? Um, yeah, I'm not, I mean, there's so many questions. I can't. I couldn't answer them all if, if I mean I do want to, but um, the videos would be out. I mean I'd have to make another like ten hour long videos, and um, I don't think um, you're in the uh, well. I'm not in the mood for it, and um, <clears throat> I'm sure you're not either. And um, so I'm going to keep it. Short. Oh, I'm getting a cold. It's freezing cold outside. Uh, I'm going to keep it short and sweet. Well, as short as I can. And as sweet. Well, as sweet as I am. <laughs> I am sweet. I'm lovely. I'm lovely. <laughs> Smoking again. Uh... Mm, okay. So in this this one, I'm gonna just um, give you a little um, synopsis of um, Patricia Burns, Pete Pete Burns, my relationship with Pete. Oh, I feel so lucky that. Um, well, you'll you'll um, you'll understand what I mean when when I finish telling you. But I, I do feel extremely lucky that things turned out the way they did. Um, because mm, she's got nits. She's got nits again, girl. Um, there's something wrong with my light, which is why it's flashing. It's not. I'm not at a, di uh, at a disco. Uh, God knows I've been to enough of them. Um, which is what the lights flashing because th there's something wrong with the with the bulb or something. Um, yeah, so Patricia Burns. Um, <coughs> I am. Um, oh, I'm not <coughs> I am. Um, in the in the early eighties, it was kind of like the three of us. Well, it started off as. Um, me and George, and then as Patricia, I was call her Patricia, uh, as Pete developed, developed um, sorry, I've been eating pastrami, so I've been stuck in my teeth. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> as um, Pete, how am I gonna put this? Um, how Pete, Pete's visage, I don't mean fade to grey, um, Stéphanie Etrange, 
Steve Strange, um, as Pete's visage changed, he kind of joined in with the androgynous um, section, which is George and I. Um, and so he became prettier and, and became one of the um, androgynous um, mob, which was us. I'm scratching my hair like I, want. <laughs> I don't have any hints. I really don't. <laughs> I've never even had crabs. Let's keep it that way, shall we? Um, yeah, as he as he joined in with with um, with the androgynous the two of us, and then kind of Annie Lennox joined in, and then they, then they lumped Prince in, and suddenly it was like you know androgyny was. Um, um, the thing, we seem to have started, um, some kind of, m not movement, but a, a new thing which had never really been, and had never really had a late, another one, here we go again, another late, hadn't had a label put on it, you know, like boys who kind of looked like girls and you couldn't tell, um, if they were boys or girls, but suddenly we were called gender benders, um, <sighs> These names the papers come up with. Um, so that's what we were um, referred to. And um, so it started off, when we, um, I started doing, you know, George George was successful, having started having her hits. And then I came on the scene with no help from George, I, I might add, um, completely independently. Although, uh, like I told you in my last video, the narrative he tries to spin is um, a whole other story. But we won't go into that because it is that, um, you know, if I wanted to do that story, it, I would have to start it with oh, Once Upon a Time. And I don't want to do any fairy stories, even though there's a big fairy to go in it. But moving right along. <laughs> um <laughs> back, to, back to the story. Um, so, Georgia becomes successful, I became successful, and then Pete was being successful. And he started working with stock and and Waterman and everything. And the press were always trying to play the three of us off against each other. I had never ever met Pete Burns, I'd never spoken to him, I didn't know, I didn't know him at all. Although George said he, um, he, um, he um, has, I think he said he had some experiences with him, but I, I can't remember what, what, what they were, but I, I personally didn't know, know Pete. But the press were always writing these, these vile things, like, you know, these horrible quotes that, but funnily enough, it, it, it was always like the horribleness, any horribleness that there was, always seemed to be between, um, I don't think Pete was fond of, of Gina. Um, well, it didn't come across that way anyway. He never said anything horrible about me, ever, that I ever saw. In fact, never, not once. It was always very, very nice about me. And I never said anything hor horrible about him because, I mean, I, I didn't know him. There was nothing, he hadn't done anything to me. I, I found him a bit, bit, you know, just from photographs and stuff, I found him a bit, um, scary to be honest. <laughs> I'm a bit scared of him. Um, so the press were, were writing these funny little things that, you know, trying to, trying to create this kind of war between us. Uh, and there wasn't one. Uh, there might have been some friction between Gina, like, as I said, between Gina and, and, um, Pete, but not, not, I never had a problem with him. <coughs> but there was some kind of an antagonism, but, uh, but not, but not, not a lot that I can, I can remember. And then this really weird thing happened. I, um, you know, because I was living half of the time in New York and half of the time in London. And um, I 
while I was in, in I spent like six months in New York and six months in in England, on on and off, not in in block in a block amount of time, but just on and off. But um, I had lots of experiences with Madonna in New, amongst many other people. Um, I had um, lots of experiences with Madonna and got quite friendly with her. Um, although I don't think she liked Gina either, um, at all. Um, but I got on really well with her. She seemed to like really take a shine to me. And when I did, um, did George had this big birthday party in New York and um, I performed at, uh, there, was, there was like several parties all in one evening. And um, it started off that Corey Hay, this gossip column writer in New York, who was best friends with Cornelia Guest and uh, Marissa Berenson and all, all, all of these like, you know, hoity-toity New York um, people. Um, Corey Hay, we'd gotten friendly with, with Corey and Cornelia and all of that. And I, I first met Cornelia at... Um, because I was friends, because it, it, it just, it, I can't just start somewhere because it, it's, it's all connected. Um, on one of my trips, I used to fly to New York to, uh, sometimes for, on a, I'd leave on a Friday, reduce my passport, and then fly back Monday evening. So I'd spend the whole, I'd spend the weekend in New York on my own. And I'd have adventures and meet all these different fab people. And on one of those trips, I met this guy called Wave Andy. I had no idea who who he was. I found out after he was one of like he he was the top makeup artist in America. I did Nancy Reagan's makeup and everyone else that you can possibly think of. Um, but we we had like the most incredible meeting. Didn't know who he was. Da 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 da. da. And we, I was found myself sitting at a table. Um. I went to some fashion show, I think it was a, Go a Gautier fashion show on the Lower East Side. And then I found myself out at this restaurant with loads, of, about 20 people, like Cherry Toy and, and oh God, all, all of these like, you know, movers and, sh again, movers and shakers in New York. And uh, uh, I was sitting on this banquette and there was me, some guy, and then this other guy next to him. And then he went on round the table. And I kept staring at this guy. He was so incredible looking. He had this like, like a, I don't know if you remember this old movie star called Louise Brooks. She just had this black bob hairdo. But this was a guy and I kept staring at him. He was like so fascinating looking. And there was just something about him, the way he conducted himself. And um, he kept staring at me. Um, and then we, were like, we smiled at each other. And um, he said something, and then I was like, we were kind of like talking like that. I was just fascinated. I said, "Oh my god, I can't, I can't remember what I said, but I was like, saying something along the lines of, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm fascinated with you. Who, uh, you know, who, what are, who, what, who, who, what are you?" <laughs> and he said, and he was so, he had such a style, and he said, he just went shh. And he took off this scarf, this silk scarf he had wrapped around his neck. And there's a guy sitting neck between us. And he went, let's adjourn. And I went, uh, okay. I had no idea what he was talking about. And then he leant behind the guy's back and sort of pushed him forward. So the guy had to lean forward a bit. And then he, he held one end of the scarf, this really big, long silk scarf to me. And... He held the other end and we held it up so to create like this wall between <laughs> behind this guy's bag to block out the rest of the table. And the rest of the table, they're all like talking, but you could tell that they were like, what the hell are they up to? You know, like they were so, you know, but they were too cool to to ask, you know, what, what are you guys doing? But, um, and I didn't really know anyone at the table. Like, I, I don't know how I even found myself at this table with all these people. But so Way was holding up this scarf, and 
as soon as I held my end up, I went, oh, wow. And he said, oh, that's so much better, darling. We can hear each other. And we started talking and I absolutely, from that second onwards, I absolutely loved Way Bandy. I, mean, I, I just, we, we, we clicked. There was something, we, we just became really, really good friends. And there were, there were three of them. There was um, Way Bandy, that we always used to work together, I found out. Way Bandy, um, Maury Hobson, and Francesco Scuvolo. They always worked the three of them together. So it was hair, makeup, and photography, the three of them. And they did all the Vogue covers, Harper's, tat, you know, just all of all of the, um, all of the covers. And they did all the sort of models and blah, 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 blah. And I mean, if you're in the fashion world, you know who Way, Bandy, uh, Maury Hobson, and Francesco Scuvolo are. I mean, they're just, the legends, actually. I, I had no idea. I, I mean, I wasn't in the fashion world, especially not in New York uh, in those days. So we were talking and we, and we became, we just really got on and we exchanged phone numbers and blah, 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 blah. And then we we just became really, really good friends. And the way we do, he was so sweet. He would do do these things for me like, like he knew I loved Diana Ross. I mean, he knew, I mean, like, I, he just knew. And he'd just done the cover for her album that she was just brought out called swept away um i wish she had like a mohawk and black makeup and everything it was all her idea he, he didn't want to do that idea but um you know that was her her doing um he told me a funny story <laughs> when he turned up at the um, um to do her makeup for that for that shoot for that um album cover shoot um he walked into the room and she was sitting at the at the um at the makeup table. Um Way said, um, Miss Ross, um I always have to start with a, a clean canvas. So can you take off the make your makeup please? And she sat there and she says, um, I'm not wearing any makeup. And Way was like Okay, but for me to do my job, I'm going to need you to really take your makeup off. And she, you know, she said, I'm not wearing any makeup. And he was like, oh, God, how am I going to deal with this? And then the third time he said, Miss Ross, I'm, I'm you know, we're on, we're on a kind of schedule here. We, I, I really do need to start doing your face and I, I need you to have a clean face. And she said, for the last time, I'm not wearing any makeup. And he thought, <clears throat> okay, we're going to play this one, aren't we? So he just reached over to her and she had like three or four sets of eyelashes, false eyelashes on. So he just reached over and ripped them off of her eyes. <laughs> she's got no makeup on, but she's got false eyelashes on. And she was like, oh. And then she realised, and it was only just him and him and her seeing in, in in the room. But she was like, oh. so he ended up doing the makeup anyway. But so that was a funny like story he he told me. And then we we would do all these things like we, every Sunday there used to be this mark because I used to live on the Upper West Side on 79th in Columbus, and Way lived um, in uh, Times Square, by, right by Times Square, and he would walk up every Sunday and call me uh, just before he left and say I'll meet you at you know blah 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 and I had no idea about this this um this thing that went on every Sunday um so it, it became like a little ritual of ours every Sunday we'd go up there was this market on the upper on the upper west side behind a, a few blocks um west of Central Park and then it went all the way down for blocks and it, and it's the most amazing market and and um, he one week i met him we used to go every week and one week he said i've got a little something for you and i went what do you mean and he said i've got you a little something and i went well you i just you don't uh, you didn't have to you don't have to get me anything and he said no no, no i saw this and I, I just wanted to get it for you and it was this tiny i got it somewhere 
was this tiny little black velvet purse. And I opened it and it was pristine mint condition, like antique. And I opened it, like it click, clicked open. And there was this really long triple strand, you know, you wrap it around three times, of um, pearls, most beautiful pearls. And then inside there was like a little little lipstick um, container, empty, and a little powder puff thing that went in. It was all antique and all handmade and everything. It was beautiful. And the, he'd put the pearls inside this little purse. And I, I nearly burst into tears because, I mean, people, I don't really... You know, get presents off people, but and this meant so much to me because it was it was from Way. Um, it was such a beautiful, unexpected thing for him to 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 give me. So he would do things like that all the time. Um, I loved Way so much, and he took me to meet all these different people. I met Harry King, um, who who I see on Instagram, and we we talk back and forth, and. He, and um, See, I had no idea. This was like I, it was just one of my weekends in New York, and and I would always see see Way. And then when I'd stay there for any length of time, we would hang out even more. And then one 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 week, um, one day I, when I was there, he he took me to Harry King's apartment, and Harry was, is a photographer, was a photographer, and he's a photographer, top photographer, and. He always had like top supermodels, in, you know, in his in his place. And as I walked in with Way, um, he was just finishing photographing Patty Hansen. So I, he, we all, in, you know, he introduced me to Patty, and we had like a little chat and everything. She ended up marrying Keith Richards. Um, and it's funny because I I met her in um, Jamaica many many years later with Keith and and the girls Alexa and her other daughter I can't remember her other daughter's name, um, so they, we had a great, so it, it, it's, it's all this this connect these everyone everything's connected. So he took me to Harry King's and I met um, Patty Hanson and then uh, Harry ended up doing a photo session where he suddenly said oh let me do your makeup so he you know we were just playing around he he put some makeup on me. And we did this photo session, and um, Harry actually sent me the the um, the contact sheet um, just recently, and I had never seen it because I I just saw he was on Instagram, and I sent him a message saying, oh, I don't know if you remember me, but Way brought me over to your apartment, and we did this photo session, and of course he remembered it immediately, and he he actually found the contact sheet and sent me. The, some of the stills and they're, they're amazing pictures. I mean, I mean, we'd be just playing around and they're just really, really lovely pictures, um, black and white. And, um, why am I telling you this story? I was gonna get lost in this story. Um, right, because I'm talking about Pete Burns. So, um, and I got no idea why why that's connected. Um, so uh, I met all these great great people. Oh, that's right. And then Wayne knew I liked Diana Ross, and he just done the cover of of, of um, the magazine. And then he did, this other time he said, "I've got a surprise for you," and he was all excited. And I was like, "Oh, Way, you haven't, you know, I haven't, I haven't got you anything." And he said, "Marilyn, just." Close your eyes and open your put your hand open. And I put my hand open, and he placed two tickets, front row tickets, to Diana Ross at um, Radio City Music Hall. She was she was doing a, a series of live shows at Radio City Music Hall, and because he'd done my makeup, he'd got these tickets and front row front row seats. So, and I was like, oh my god! And, and at that point, I'd never seen Diana live, um, and. I was just like stunned, you know, and I sat there in the front row with Way and watched Diana, and it was just a, a great show. I mean, there were a couple of little, there was, she had a little bit of um, a little tears, which, um, um, <laughs> anyway, it wasn't the, one of her best shows, let's put it that way. There was there was a, a couple of problems, but, um, um, So we went to that, and then I found out that he said um, after the show was over, 
He said, okay, so we're going to the party now. And I went, party? What party? He said, the after party. And I went, you've got tickets for the Eastern Maryland? Of course, I'm not going to take you to the show. Like, we're going to the party. And Dinah had hired um, the USS Enterprise or something that's permanently docked on the Lower East Side in, Ma in Manhattan, on the docks. This massive, great big battleship or aircraft hangar. Aircraft carrier, sorry. And we we went to this party, the after party. And as we arrived, there's this massive, great big gangplank going up, up to the, to the ship that you have to go past the, all the security and all of that. So we whizzed past those and we were up up the gangplank. <laughs> up the gangplank. So it's like a carry on film. Um, and we just, up, we're about three quarters of the way up and then suddenly this car screeched to a halt down below in the parking lot and all this noise and commotion and then this girl fell out of this limo onto her back with her legs in <laughs> and it was that was my introduction to Cornelia Cornelia Kest and apparently like I said who is that She's so loud and screaming and it was all photographers taking pictures and all of that and I was like saying to Wayne who on earth is that and he said oh that's the um the current it girl around town it's Cornelia Guest, and I went okay. Let's um, let's get inside the party. She went. <laughs> she, 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 that was quite an entrance, quite an, an arrival that she made. Um, so we went inside the party. Massive, great big. You walked in, and there's this massive, great big. But it's an aircraft carrier. And there were planes hanging from the ceiling and all sorts, and um, we were just standing there, and it was packed full of like the well, it's a Dana Ross party is like the, she and you know so the people that were at this party were the oh, you know there was like people like Lauren Bacall and um, Warren Beatty and you know all of these kind of people and because it was so, such a huge aircraft carrier it seemed like there was hardly anyone in there and there was, great, there was another buffet. There was a buffet. And so Wayne and I were standing by the buffet and there were all these tables around. And I remember seeing, there was Lauren Bacall sitting at a table just facing directly Wayne and I. And nobody really kind of like knew, knew me at that point in New York. A few, a few you know, underground people kind of knew, but not, not the, you know, I wasn't well known in New York. Um, and Lauren Bacall kept staring at me and I kept looking at Wayne saying, is this something, what's, what's, what's her problem? And I could see, like, she was looking at me and she kept talking to the people as they were going, and she was smacking it. So I could hear, like, I almost hear her. I mean, she was saying something like, who is that? You know, is it a man or is it a guy? It like something, she was like, she wasn't, like, nice. It was like, a, I wasn't getting a good vibe off of her. And I kept looking at her and I was like, okay, <laughs> all right, love. Yeah, I'm Marilyn. Remember you did a film with me years ago? <laughs> How to Marry a Millionaire. Remember? I stole the show from you. <laughs> anyway, so that was that. And then, But then on the next table over, there was um, all these people dressed in black. And it, they were all head to toe in black. And there was a, it, it almost looked like there should, should be um, a rain cloud over the table like with thunder and lightning and everything <laughs> like, the, the, it was very dark and it was um Le lisa robinson this really famous top writer in new york who knew like rock and roll who knew everybody um knew, who knew everybody and then there was the top photographer um stephen mizell sitting at the table and I, i'd met him many many times and so and then uh, there was all these you know those kind of people sitting at this table and it's not really the dumb thing to go over to people and 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 do that. But I, I'm Marilyn. I don't give a fuck about all that, that stupidness. And when I saw, and they all kind of like looked at me and they were like, you know, waving hi, Marilyn. <laughs> so I um, I went over to the table and was like chatting to them, blah blah blah. I mean, that was that. Um. And then, as when I was, I went back and was, and was standing with Way. And then if the, all these reporters kept coming over and taking out and photographers taking our photograph. Way and I, 
And then there was this one woman, she came over and she was talking to me, asking me what I thought of the concert. And I was like saying, I'm just being honest. And I just said, well, it wasn't really one of her best. Uh, I've seen better. I was, I think Diana was on top form, you know, something, something didn't seem right. Um, and I had no idea who, the, who I was talking to. And then the next day, <laughs> The next day, it was like a five or six page spread in People magazine. <laughs> next day, next day or day after, um, there was a five or six six page spread in People magazine, and they had pictures of me and Way in there, and they'd quoted me saying all these things about how horrible the concert was, <laughs> the Dinah's concert was, and of course, Dinah reads everything written about her, so that's how. Even though we weren't here. Well, we were standing there, so I said that thing to this reporter, and then it was printed in People magazine. But as we were standing there, suddenly there was this commotion, and it was like it was empty. This place it felt like it was empty, but there must have been about three, two, three hundred people in there. But it didn't feel like that because it was so huge. And then there was this commotion over in the far corner, and here she comes, Miss Ross, and she had like this um, Galanos gown on satin gown and she was twirling around and she was constantly surrounded by five uh, like five people deep uh, a five people deep circle of people around her and wherever she moved this everyone else moved with her so I was trying to imagine what it felt like to her because looking on the outside looking in it I mean it looked like there was no one at this party because it was so huge and I was trying to imagine what it felt like if, if what she was seeing from her perspective. And she must have thought there were thousands of people at this party because wherever she moved, so so did this circle of people and photographers and all this. And she was dancing, doing, you know, doing her Diana thing and, you know, entertaining and doing all the hair and all of that. And she was making the rounds. Um, when I got to know her, she told me a couple of little tricks about about what she was actually up to at that party, that she does at every party. Um, and then she started making noise. And then Wei and I were still standing at the buffet and Wei said out the, out the corner of the mouth, she's gonna come over. And she was still quite a, a ways away and I went, she's not. He said, Marilyn, she's gonna come over. And I went, oh my God, I actually started shaking. I mean, the only person I've ever, you know, I've said it many times, I'm not impressed by celebrities and royalty and all that except Diana Ross because of well you'll read in the book why she in particular had such a huge um effect on my life and me uh, and I didn't believe him I didn't believe that she was going to come over I couldn't believe Diana Ross would be coming over to us um sure enough within five minutes this huge mob of people came came over to Wei and I, and, and suddenly Diana Ross was standing in front front of um, of us, and she she gave Wei a kiss and was like, "Now who's this?" And and he introduced me, and we, you know, I met Diana Ross for the very first time. That was my introduction to Diana Ross, and I was, what an evening seeing a show of my, you know. The one person I kind of did idolise at the time, and then going to this private party, and then meeting her, and all of this, and that, you know, oh, it was just incredible. And it was all down to way he'd done this as like a a treat for me because he knew I liked Diana. And um, so back in back in London. So I was getting all this this kind of publicity and everything, and um, meeting all of these people. And, and Madonna was like another another person I got kind of like friendly with, and had like some um, uh, what would you call it um, adventures. I had some adventures with Madonna, um, and. So I got friendly with her manager, 
who was Freddie DeMann at the time. It was Freddie DeMann. And I was thinking, I need, I was looking for a manager, because Tommy Mottola was going to manage me at one point. He was flying backwards and forwards to London and da, 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 and that didn't, anyway, so w one of the managers I was looking at was um, Freddie DeMann, which was Madonna's manager. And, um, you know, I got friendly with him. So any time Madonna did any of her tours, all I had to do was pick up the phone and call Freddie, and I'd have, um, you know, VIP seats and, and backstage passes and the whole, whole hoo-ha. Um, so on one of these, it was the tour that she is, what was it called? The Blonde Ambition Tour, it was. And I went to that. I went to several of, of um, her um, live shows and because because of Freddie and because I'd met Madonna and stuff. And Way actually did her makeup as well when she first started off, when she was touring. He went on tour with her and did her makeup. So and he would, um, he told me that they would, um, she would ask, She I don't know how she knew, but she, or maybe she saw People magazine, I don't know. But she was be sitting in, in her dressing room and she'd be asking loads of questions about me and you know, all of this because she knew I knew, knew Way. So that was my kind of like introduction to Madonna, even though I didn't kind of know. Um, so I had these free tickets and I'd always go to the, the shows in London when Madonna did her um, tours. Went to the Blonde Ambition um, show and which was actually, I think, one of her best shows ever, her best live shows, where she's lying on the bed and she's got the gold conical bra thing and she, do, she does like an Egyptian version of like a virgin and she's on, on this tilted gold bed and um, she's got Nubian slaves, like, you know, you know it, was the, it, it was that show. I, amazing. And I went with, I asked Robert to get, my friend Robert to go with me to this show. And stupidly, I had taken a line of cocaine. <laughs> As you do, rock star. Um, before going to this show. So when we got there, at Wembley Stadium, massive. Wembley Stadium is, was massive. And the VIP was um, section was quite a, a, ways, a ways from the stage. Um, and it slopes down. So there's like, a, you know, you, you walk down the thing and there's um, the slope and there's seats on either side in the VIP section. And at the very end, there's this like wall. And then there's the pitch packed full of people and then you can see the whole of the stadium you know Wembley stadiums like 60,000 50,000 people or something and I'm high I just think of the line of cocaine stupidly I've never done that before and I never did it again um so I was like really nervous I, I don't usually get nervous about things like that but walking into a VIP room is not you know <laughs> but because I'd had this um this line I walked in and I had this uh, grey suit on with like a um, really sheer suit that kind of, and it was outside obviously Wembley, Wembley Stadium and there was a breeze and everything. I had my blonde hair and da 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 da, da gorge face and all that. I walked in, walked down the slope and there was hardly anyone sitting down yet and the first person I saw sitting halfway down to on the right with about four or five of other people, they kind of like, and they all turned around to watch me and Robert walk down. And halfway along the line was Pete Burns. And he looked at me and he gave me the most a filthy look. I mean, vile. I mean, I've never met him, never spoken to him, never said anything horrible to him, never heard him say anything horrible about me. But on that particular day, he just gave me the most vile look. And as I'm walking down this slope with Robert walking behind me, someone in the front row, like on the pitch, thousands and thousands of people, 
noticed because everyone was obviously looking at the VIP section to see who, who's coming in and they saw me come in and somebody started hissing <laughs> it's like and then it's like because they to me and I just take a little and I go I was like oh and I said to Robert I want to go I want to go and he said we're not leaving and I was like oh no I don't want I don't want to I don't want to and he said walk forward do not and I was like oh no 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 so I thought okay put yourself together mass <laughs> and this boo and this hiss it spread across the field of thousands of people, all kind of like looking at me, at the VIP section and me walking down. And this, this booing and hissing and everything, it spread like a, like, like a stone thrown in the pond and the ripples go out. It went like that until like it, the whole stadium was like, and I was like, Oh my God, they hate, everyone hates me. Everyone, like, uh, what have I done? What have I done? Why do these people hate me? Um, and then I thought, oh, fuck them. Fucking, like, booing at me. How dare they? <laughs> <laughs> you have to find that kind of thing from somewhere because otherwise they, they'll eat you alive. I, I, I mean, I was going to get, I wanted, if it wasn't Robert, I would have turned around and left. I would have ran. Because it was just so intimidating, like a whole stadium full of people. And then they all start booing and hissing at you. And then I glanced over at Pete Burns after they started doing this booing and I'm still walking down. And he had this look on his face like, like oh, he couldn't have been happier because they were like, they hated Marilyn. Or apparently they hated Marilyn. And I walked past, he was sitting on the right in his row. And I walked past, a couple of rows past him, and there was hardly anyone else sitting in, in the VIP section. The whole place was packed, except for the VIP section. Everyone took their seats in the VIP section just before the show started. They were all, like, all drinking champagne in the, you know, in the, in the private bar and all the rest of it. And a couple of rows past where Pete Burns was on the right-hand side, I walked down, and then I turned left and walked halfway along the the like there the, the weren't individual seats it was like a bench like these benches and i walk, walked halfway along and i thought oh, I'm going to start. and they're all really booing and hissing at this point and i thought no i'm not having this so i stood there and i kind of gave the place a look and I had this really, like this suit, this grey suit with this cut off top underneath and all these gold chains and everything. Um, so I gave the place, scanned the place and I let the jacket slip off my shoulders and I had this really thin spaghetti, like straps on this like cut off top underneath. I let the jacket slide off my shoulders and I put my head back and let the jacket slip down onto the bench and as the jacket fell a breeze blew and my hair started blowing out and i gave this kind of like mm. yeah mm. the breeze and everything i kind of forgot about the bit i was trying to ignore all the booing it was really loud as well and i swear to god if robert, well, robert will tell you this i'm not making any of this up at all and i looked at people and he was loving the fact that i was getting this bad reception I let that jacket slide off my off my shoulders and the breeze came out of nowhere and blew my hair and everything and kind of blew the jacket off the rest of my arms, off the rest of the way off my arms. Instantly, the booing turned to screams of cheering and like, yeah, they went absolutely fucking mental. And it just as quickly, in fact, even quicker, the, the, the booing had spread. The screaming and cheering and like suddenly it was like, and I was like, and I kind of smiled and I was like, <laughs> like to everybody, hi. Like I just suddenly noticed them. Like I hadn't noticed any of them. Tens of thousands of people like hating me <laughs> like two seconds earlier. Suddenly they all loved me. The, the whole of Wembley Stadium loved me and they're all screaming and all that after I think 
let the jacket slide off. And just as I'm like lowering myself, I waved to everyone, da, 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 and just as I'm lowering myself into the sea, I did another little glance over to Pete Burns and his expression had changed yet again. He was fuming, absolutely fucking fuming because I had switched that situation around from hate to love in literally in the click of a finger or the slip of a jacket. And I just said, don't count me out, bitch. I, mm -mm. Don't be too, too hasty in counting me out. And he, I, I, I loved it because it was like, not only had a Wembley, like, suddenly love, like, it was giving me love, but I'd, <laughs> I'd shown Pete Burns, it was like, you know, give him a bit of beauty and a bit of glamour and a bit of sexuality. And it's amazing what how you can turn these situations around. So that was that. And we watched the show and blah, 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 blah. Cut to, no, nothing else with Pete Burns. Cut to, literally, a couple of years ago, um, two, three weeks before he died. I was with one of my friends, Af Afshin. Oh, we, went, we were going to NA meetings and stuff. And we were in Soho and we were going to go, and we'd been to a meeting and we were going to have something to eat at a Japanese restaurant. And... The Japanese restaurant that I like on Old Compton Street was packed. I mean, there was like dozens and dozens of people in line outside. And I went, oh, I can't. I can't. So, and there's another Japanese restaurant a bit further along. So we decided, Afshin and I decided to go and eat in this Japanese restaurant, which is just as good food. I mean, I, I mean I'll eat Japanese food all day. And as we're walking past, where was he sitting? Uh, I think it was, it was old, it was old, um, what was it called? Compton's. It was Compton's. It was sitting outside Compton's outside. And we walked past and I, I said to Afton, I think that's Pete Burns. And he said, it is. And I went, do you know what? I'm, and we'd walked past him by this point and he hadn't, he hadn't seen me. And I said, hold it a second, Afton. And I stopped and I turned around and I went back and I stood in front of him and he was just behind, sitting at his table. Thing. And I looked at him and he looked up at me and I said, hi, how are you doing? And he looked at me and he couldn't kind of come back. And I went, it's Marilyn. And he went, oh my God, I can't do the accent, the, the Man Mancunian accent, uh, or Liverpool, I can't remember. Uh, <laughs> just from that accent up there. I can't do it. But she was like, Oh my God, Marilyn! Oh, and she got up so quickly. She's knocking the table over and all of that, and she had this big fake fur coat on and like oh, this blonde wig and da 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 da. And she came out from behind that table. I thought, uh, and uh, because I had the last experience I'd had with her was at the Madonna concert, I thought she was coming out to stab me <laughs> or something. I thought she was going to start, you know, start on me. No, that's not why she was coming out from me. She was a fan of mine and, and I it sounds ridiculous it, I mean it re, it sounds ridiculous to me and I, I'm the one that's telling the story he was a fan of mine and he went absolutely crazy for me on Old Compton Street and he was like, oh, girl, oh, I've loved you for so long. And, oh, let's do, I want to do a picture. And she was getting her friend to, do, like, to do pictures. And we did pictures together and da, 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 da. And I was like, oh, my, I was, like, kind of overwhelmed with, with this because it was just so unlike what I thought. I thought he hated me. I mean, fr from just going by the Madonna thing, the concert alone, I really thought that he, he, um... He didn't have very much love for me, <laughs> but um, he he did. He, he and we had a really really good talk, you know. And um, we talked about George, you know George and you know a couple of a couple of things. And she was saying things to me that I I shouldn't really really repeat. It. It's not very nice, but uh, she liked me. She really really liked me and always had done. And she never been, never was fond of, of Gina for 
some reasons, um, which I won't go into because it's actually none of my business and I don't feel comfortable repeating what Pete was saying that day about, uh, so, but anyway, he, he, to me, he was absolutely lovely and he was like saying, where are you going now, girl, and all this, and I was like saying, are we just going for quick something, something to eat in a Japanese restaurant and, <coughs> and da 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 da. And he gave me his phone number and he's like saying, oh, we've got to get together and we need to hang out. And, and I said, and I, I meant it as well. And I, I don't usually, you know, I don't say things to people like that. If I don't lie and say, yeah, no, no, let's get together. I'm not that kind of phony showbiz bollocks. Um, but with Pete, I, I had every intention of calling him. And we said goodbye and everything. We did these pictures and said goodbye. And um, Afshin and I went into the, Afshin took the pictures, um, went into the Japanese restaurant. And it was one of those Japanese restaurants where the tables are sunk into the floor. So you have to go in and you get down into the floor to, to sit on these little benches that are like, sunken in the floor. So we, and, and we were at a table with loads of other people. And Afshin and I were just talking and saying, oh my God, that, that was incredible. Like, oh, how that... How sweet was was he? I mean, I would never have never have dreamed that. I, I mean, it was just in, you know, it, it felt like everything had come full circle. All the bullshit over all the years and the nonsense and the lies that the newspapers had propagated and, and trying to get us to, you know, all of that instigate fights and whatever. But it, and it was all fictitious, um, apparently, because he he was literally like a fan I mean, I mean i mean it sounds ridiculous me saying it but he was like a fan of mine um and he was so sweet i mean i he was just so sweet so sweet to me what he was saying and you, and you can see in the photographs that i've got how he felt i mean he just did not want to say goodbye to, you know he just wanted more time with, with me and unfortunately, I, I, you know, I was having dinner with him and stuff. So we were sitting down after the night, and then suddenly there was this commotion at the door, and it's like, oh no, I, I, my friend's in here, and, and I was like, oh no, what's happening now? And I, obviously, I, I could hear it was Pete, and she came, she came all the way over because we were sitting right at the end. She's like, Marilyn, Marilyn, gal, and we're sitting at the table with all these other people in this sunken table. And she doesn't get in the banquet. She sits on the table. She pushes all of the food and everything that people are eating. She pushes all the food to one side and she just plonks herself on the table in front of us. And she's going, gal, I'm, oh, I love you so much. I love you. I'm going to buy you dinner. I'm going I'm to pay for your dinner. And I was going, no, 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 no. You don't have to do that. Really, like, seriously. And she went on and on and on and on. And then she went up to the cashier and she tried to use a card and the card didn't work. It's like, this whole big thing. It's like, and I was saying, he came back and he was like saying, oh, Marilyn, I, I want to buy you dinner. I want to buy you dinner so much. And uh, and he was went into this whole prolonged story about uh, there was something wrong with his card and uh, some payment. I, I, I've i got no idea if it was going in one ear and out the other. He was talking so quick as well. I, I could barely, and that accent, I could barely understand what he was going on about. But his intentions were, were, you know, beautiful. He wanted to buy me dinner. Um, and, and unfortunately, it, it wouldn't go through. But that's beside the point. I didn't want, want him to buy me. It, it was the, the thought and the gesture. It just meant so much to me that he... He had no qualms about expressing how he felt at all. And because he had such a huge positive feeling towards me... It was wonderful to be on the re receiving end of that. Now, I've seen him when he's not fond of the person and I wouldn't want to be on the receiving end of a Pete Burns. I wouldn't be, want to be on the receiving end when I go off. And he, he was even worse than I can be, used to be, had the ability to be, choose not to be. Um, but he was so lovely. He was so lovely. And like I say, it felt like it had come full circle. And we, 
I felt like I had a friend. I thought we, I, I felt like we were friends. I really did. And it was so, so lovely. So after all the years and years of just nonsense that had, had gone on between, th well, between the, in, in the newspapers and magazines and stuff. And, um, uh, I did call him a few times and we spoke on the phone a few times um, and he called me a couple of times and da 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 da, da. and we, there was some project he wanted me, me to be involved in, some musical project, we were going to do something together. But then the next thing I, I heard was that he gone. His, his time, his time was, was, gone, was up. And, um, which is why I said at the beginning, um, I stated at the beginning of this, um, little anecdote, um, how grateful I feel that I got to have these experiences with him because obviously he wasn't here much longer. And as I said, the full circle thing, it just felt like everything, all the loose ends were tied and it was, it was beautiful. It was really beautiful to, to have that experience with him, those experiences with him after after so, so long and so ridiculous. I mean, just ridiculous. We were children, but and, you know, didn't know. But that those I I another set of memories that I treasure, like the ones of George and I in Egypt and everything. I I wouldn't swap those those memories for for anything or the experiences. You know, I felt I felt like we were friends. We were friends. I, we were friends at the end, and um, God bless him. God bless him. Yeah. Yeah. He, he was a sweetheart, really. He really was a sweetheart. Underneath all of the brash and the surgeries and the whatever, you know, the, um, the craziness. There was a beautiful, beautiful soul underneath, underneath all of that. And talented, talented, very clever, very quick, quick. You know, he got it and very quick, very clever, and very lovely. And I feel very privileged that like I say, I had those experiences with him at the end. And um, I'm, my heart, you know, I am upset that it was brief, as brief as it was, but so grateful that I I, had, I managed to, you know, I mean, he, he could have left, he could have gone without any of that happening. And I would have been left with just the Madonna story and, and and not a lot else, you know, except newspaper nonsense. But I, I don't. I have, I have what I have, and how amazing, how amazing to have that. Pete, and it's funny as well because um, We were going to do this project together, and, and uh, that, that that would have been um, quite something, I think, if we'd if we'd managed to actually do it. I think it would have been quite something. I, I, oh my God! I've been talking for an hour again. I don't believe it. I, don't, I'm, I haven't said anything, and it's. An hour. I don't believe. Every time I start talking, it suddenly it's an hour's gone. <laughs> oh, guys, I'm sorry. 
just chatterbox, chatterbox, chatter, chatter, chatter. Ah, uh, she's mentos. Um, so that's my Patricia Burns stories for you. Um, I it's only it's funny because when I when I talk to you guys in these videos, I realise just how vast this story of mine, my life, um, how vast it really is, and how many people are involved, and that all the interconnections and and parallel. It's quite. It's quite amazing, really, um, just how many people I've met and the different countries and how... Whew, this book is going to be quite something, I do believe. It's going to be quite something. If these um, recollections are anything to go by. And um, even though I do say so myself, I am a rather good writer. Modest. She's mo she's modest as the day is long. <laughs> oh dear, Marilyn. Marilyn. Well guys, I have done three videos in a week. <laughs> it's like it's like a feast or famine with me, isn't it? Actually that's that's the that's a good title for my book actually. Feast or famine. Because that's basically what my life is. It's either all or nothing. I've either got, it's all going on or there's nothing going on. I've got everything or nothing. But actually, even when I've got nothing, I've got everything. Now that's deep. Okay. You know Marilyn's deep. Marilyn is deep. So, for the rest of my um, recollections. You're going to um, have to wait for the book, I'm afraid, because um, I can't keep. I mean, I may do maybe one or two more videos. I don't know, but I can't do too many more because it's it take it it takes away from the book. I don't know. I don't want the book to just be repeating. What I've spoken about on video, on my vlogs. What do they call it? What do the kids call it? I'm vlogging, I'm vlogging on YouTube. Look at me, <laughs> straight down the kids. <laughs> Not like James Charles. Not down the kids like that. <laughs> shade the shade why that person is not in the penitentiary i anyway that's none of my business um but what i do feel is my business is i would just like to say that um i where's the ca i don't know where the camera is on this thing um i would just like to say that I send all of my love to Peter Mon and Alex, his husband. And um, his his best friend, Tanya, Tanya Jean. And his dogs and, you know. I, ho I hope he's making a speedy recovery. And I, I really do think about him often and send him send him healing, healing vibrations and thoughts and prayers to Alex, Peter and Tanya and all, all of Peter's um, friends and family. I'm so glad uh, someone told me that he, um, I mean, he's still not, not, not good. He's got a group, uh, I got told what, what was, in, in the private message, I, I got told by somebody who apparently knows um, more about the situation or was speaking like they do. So I presume that he, the person who sent me this message knows Peter Mon. Um, 
and although it's not I don't think it's life threatening it's still it's still you know you still hurt you know, he hurt himself in, in the car crash and um I sent my love to I sent my love to them all and um and anyone else that's hurting or going through a rough time at the moment. It's been a it's been a terrible last couple of years. And um I just give positive vibrations to everybody even the people I hate <laughs> that's that's actually a joke because I don't hate anybody you have to care to hate <laughs> I, don't, I don't care I don't hate anybody <laughs> always got to get that bit of fucking shading oh Marilyn please well it is late and uh, I have been oh god I have showed you my um all the goodies. <laughs> <laughs> She'll never change. Not bad for a 60 year old though, right? Not bad. She's, she's doing all right, considering, considering the trauma that I've been through in the last year and a half. I'm not doing too badly. I ain't got a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out of, but you know. That's, um, I have other things that are, um, priceless. You can't buy, you can't buy it. You can't get given it. You can't borrow it. You can't learn it. And yet, I know I have it. So, the upshot is I'm, um, God, I sound like really... It's <laughs> terrible. Basically, I'm just saying I'm I'm happy to be me. Flaws and all. But I'm working on them. I promise you, I'm working on my flaws. Um, and on that note... Although I could sit here for at least another couple of hours pontificating, reminiscing, recollecting, regaling you with um, foibles, stories, anecdotes, tales, scandals and all sorts of um, rubbish. <laughs> I won't. I won't. Um, thank you. I say it in every video, but I mean it. Thank you so much for giving me your time and your interest and in sending me your love and your care. You know, I, um, I appreciate it deeply, deeply. Thanks guys. Have a lovely evening, morning, afternoon. I'll see you soon. <laughs>